Hi, hi, it's Tara. I'm back with another video, and this time I'm doing one of my most recent purchases, and this is from the house of Serge Luton. As you know, it's like one of my favorite, and this is Borneo 1834, and this is basically the famous uh, Graziel bottle. Graziel means a uh, skyscraper in French, and this is like a opaque black bottle with a matte um, placard right here and then the name of the perfume right here. So this is Borneo. Borneo is an island um, in Indonesia, one of the bigger islands, the biggest island probably, and that's where the orangutans came from and all sorts of other stuff. So basically this is an homage to cacao and to patchouli. So I, this is not a blind buy, okay? So Grazial bottles are insanely expensive, especially if you buy them in America. Uh, but if you go to France, it's a little less. But where I got this bottle, and I also got this two Penhaligon like bottles is from Harrods. Um, Harrods is a, depart a famous department store in the UK, uh, actually in London. But yes, uh, they actually sell online to the U.S. perfumes that are highly discounted. So this one um, I got for, you know, a lot less than the price that I would have paid. Uh, unfortunately, they also charge 10% VAT, V-A-T, which is taxes. Um, in, a, in California, it's like 8.75 maybe uh, for my city. But that's, so that's 2% extra. Plus they also charge a flat fee of $42 to ship from London to US, which is not bad because, um, you know, that's not as much as I saved. So all in all, I bought this and two Penhaligans and I saved um, quite a lot of money, enough for it to be worth it for me. But anyways, I wanted to tell you about this perfume because a lot of people might not know it. It's not easily readily available for sampling because I don't think Serge Luton actually has much of a presence in the U.S. anymore. Um, it kind of got crowded out by all the, you know, vanilla and new coming like niche fragrances. But Serge Luton was one of the original like uh, type of avant-garde perfume houses that came they were very early like forerunners and um back then they were they kind of like started the spicy the and all these other things that are now like considered like staple pieces and stuff like that so they were very daring back in the day uh, but then now all the other houses have kind of like caught up and i don't know if they still have the same cachet in the U.S. as they do, um, like maybe in Europe or elsewhere, but I still love them. There's like, they're one of my most collected houses. I have, after Galan, I actually have the most um, Serge Luton uh, scents in my collection, and this was one of them. So if you ever see, if you like cacao, and this is not the sweet cocoa or chocolate or anything. It's like a powdery, earthy kind of uh, cacao, the real thing. It's like unsweetened chocolate um, about to be processed. Um, and then it has like amazing patchouli. Uh, this is patchouli that is very earthy. It's not like standing in the background. This is like in your face kind of patchouli, a slightly oily, um, gaseous, camphoric. It has like a slightly, by camphoric, I mean it, it has like a, like a refreshing kind of minty, almost cooling effect to it. It's slightly oily and gassy. And that with the cacao and these other notes are just stunning. So I really, really love this. This was not a blind buy though. I've been eyeing this for many years and I have not been wanting to, you know, take the plunge until I saw it on the Harrods website for that good price. And that was what convinced me to get it. So that's this, if you ever get a chance to, to um, 
to sample this, go for it. Uh, it's quite challenging. It's not like your usual vanilla, fruity, light. This is like kind of um, challenging, but for me, it's really worth the challenge. I really love it. I really love it. I think also because I have an Asian background, so I'm not afraid of medicinal type smells. You know what I mean? This smells like um, medicinal Asian like oils and ointments and stuff like that that I remember fondly from my childhood. Um, okay, so now that we're doing that, let's do this. So this is the Penhaligans, one of the Penhaligans that I got. Um, so this was also deeply discounted. This I bought blind um, because there's Penhaligans is also hard to sample uh, in person in the U.S. You have to go to the website and order samples and whatnot. There used to be a San Francisco store. Uh, but alas, no more. Um, I don't think Am Americans don't really like appreciate like Penhaligans. Uh, it started out as a, a British uh, bespoke brand, like a it was a barber shop for for guys, and then now it's turned into like an international like um, house. Uh, they have many, many, many labels. I mean, they have many, many perfumes. Let's just put it that way. And a lot of people know them for the super expensive ones with the animal heads, the portraits. And I do have a few portraits, but I actually think like some of their older ones like uh, Vara, which I did a video on. It's like an Indian carrot rose was one of their best and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I also have a lot of Penhaligans too. I'm like an aficionado, but a lot of the portraits, I really don't feel is worth their price tag. So I bought this blind because I've been wanting a vanilla that is kind of spicy and resinous. And a lot of people have said that Babylon was really good. And I do have to say it, it is really good. It's not a bad perfume, but um, I feel like in America, it's not that unique, you know what I mean? It's not that unique, but what is unique is its sister, and I don't know where the heck I put it, but anyways, the newest one of this line is called The Legacy of Petra, and that one is outstanding. So that one I super, super love. Uh, Petra or Petra is an old, one of those um, lost Middle Eastern cities that is hacked out of the red, red rocks uh, out in the desert and it's like legendary. So it's like a, it's like a beautiful, legendary, exotic place in the Middle East. And yeah, so the, the reason why I like that one a lot more than this is because there is a huge note of matcha. I mean, it's not matcha, okay? But to me, it smells like matcha. It's kind of bittersweet, uh, but they say it's green tea, vanilla, with lots of fennel and licorice and whatnot, and woods. So to me, that one is really outstanding. Um, I will show a picture of it right here. So if you do want to have an unusual vanilla that is kind of bittersweet, a really rich, um, interesting, I would do the legendary legend of Petra uh, versus this one. Um, but you do have to like matcha or you have to like sort of like earthy, bittersweet green notes um, versus like pure sweet vanilla. So that one is like a green uh, aromatic vanilla licorice one. Um, thank you. Bye.